Hey, Skinny G Panda here. So today I am hiking, backpacking actually, uh, a section of the Appalachian Trail and I don't have to do it alone. So today I am hiking, backpacking actually, uh, a section of the Appalachian Trail. I'm starting at the Swatara State Park area and going to head to the William Penn Shelter. It's a little over eight miles and I don't have to do it alone because I have Adam Z here. How's it going? So we're gonna hit the trail and uh, hopefully stay warm. I don't think it's gonna be any issue, but it's very windy today. So other than that, that's going to be our only barrier at this point. It's a very nice day for it being springtime. So looking forward. So we're going to hit the trail and get to it. So as you could hear, it's really windy. So we left Swatara State Park. And after you go under the 81 highway, you do like a basically probably a good mile worth of just a climb up which isn't so bad um, definitely is difficult but it's not as terrible as most of the climbs I've been on they do actually like make it a really nice switchback type trail so that definitely helps out a lot so it's not just a full-blown straight up the mountainside um, but it's really windy the trees are just swaying back and forth so every now and then you get really warm and then the chill just flies up the mountain and hits you out of nowhere. So keeping my layers on, but uh, we're doing pretty good so far and we're getting ready to hit the ridge line um, pretty soon for the most part. I think we got just a little more of just a tiny little hill peak, but uh, and other than that, it's going to be smooth sailing. Look at them swaying. So as you get up the mountain hill that we came up and you're on the ridge line, there is some ups and downs to it. But other than that, it's a pretty easy, moderate trail. It's actually really smooth. Um, a lot of people joke around Pennsylvania and the rocks and stuff that we have, but we really don't have uh, that many rocks up here on this part of the ridge line, which is really nice to actually see. So it's pretty smooth of a terrain so it makes it pretty easy to just breeze you don't even feel like you're really hiking technically which is uh really nice especially on the type of day that we're having so it sounds like the wind is calming down for us which is going to be nice which means it's going to warm up so by the time we probably get to camp it's probably going to be really warm which will be nice to set up and uh relax but we are halfway uh doing good on time so we're gonna get back to the trail and just get to camp. All right, see you there. watching Adam navigate through the rocks. So when they talk about Pennsylvania rocks, a lot of people complain about the little tiny pebble-like rocks on the trail. That's really no concern for like people in Pennsylvania. It's this stuff. Going through this stuff after being on such a smooth trail and your feet just rocking and roaring all around, rolling around on these rocks. Cause you know, they move when you go on them. It really hurts your feet after a while, but see, well, not see, I mean, here, they all move, but yep. So 
you just get to navigate through. I think the worst part about navigating through is sometimes there's big holes in between the rocks. So you don't want to put your foot on like these leaves that are randomly here and then uh, fall into like a big hole. But it basically just looks like someone picked up the mountain, crashed down, and was like, here's where the trail will go. But this is the part that's really complained about is these rock pieces you navigate through. So we found the lookout for what? <laughs> that was the first thing. I think there's not even like rocks in the way, but there's this. So if you think about it, tree fell. So look out with the tree. But no, there is a lookout point down here. So we're gonna take a look at it. See what a great view it is. The funny part is, is we've been hiking this ridge line, so the valley really hasn't changed. The only good part is, is from this lookout, you'll be able to get a better look at the valley without the trees in the way. Ooh, ah, nice clear sky. I don't know. How far do you think we could see? It's all the way over there. Mm, 10 miles. That's not bad. Farmland, all farmland. Ooh, does that person have their pool open? Or is that lake just really blue? I don't know, you can't really see it. It's really hard to see it. Oh wait, nope, you can see it on here. Look at that. Look at that. It's so blue. So whatever they're putting in their water is nice. Because over here is a lake or a pond and it's not that blue. <laughs> so I think these neighbors need to share their chemicals or whatnot or natural. But yeah, this is the view. So we made it to the shelter. Um, coming down, so off of the trail, the shelter is 0.1 mile, so it's it's really not that far. But um, it's really nice. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and uh, show you guys what we have here for our night. So first off, we have we're gonna have this awesome view, which is gonna be incredible. So it's really nice. Adam's down here doing his filming. Um, but uh, when you first come in, you come up to the bathroom here. Let's take a look. I believe Chris Oconee did hike here. So I'm going to link his video down below so you can check out his review of around here. But uh, here is the bathroom um it's definitely messy so i want to say the comp maybe the maintenance people were probably here or something but it does look a little messy but it's overall clean so that's not so bad over there where adam's at his uh secondary waste treatment so they probably take the poop from here and put it over there and uh compost it somehow or whatnot so a couple of the things um, that's basically happening. So the first thing is this is going to be my first backpacking trip without Dragon. Um, usually we backpack together, but he has work, um, which is why I hit up the hiking group to see if anyone else was hiking. 
and Adam Z was able to get with me and uh, devise a plan for hiking. So this is going to be my first time backpacking and camping without him. Second is going to be my first stay in a shelter as well. Uh, so the plan is as long as it doesn't get cramped, which I don't think it is, we, we've only seen one person on the trail and they've been trail running. So as long as it doesn't get cramped, we're hoping to stay in the shelter itself, which means I don't have to put up my tent. So that's gonna be a really interesting experience for myself. So I'm kind of excited on that. So the shelter, uh, it states about, it's a little over nine miles, nine and a half miles to get here from the starting point in the Swatara State Park that we were at. Um, I haven't really done any long hikes recently, so I'm hurting a little bit, not too much, um, but uh, my legs hurt a little bit and my feet so i can't wait to take the shoes off but i'm gonna go down here we're gonna take a look at the shelter take a look at where we're gonna be staying for the night it's only a little bit after two i want to say i'm using my phone no idea can i get it this way oh yeah it's 2 30 so it's 2 30 so we have lots of time to set up hang out relax, enjoy. Luckily we're down off of the ridge line so the wind's not going to be hitting us. Um, the wind today has been crazy and chilly so I'm gonna go down, check this out, and show you guys what it looks like. Adam already took his pack off. <laughs> uh. All righty. Look at this shelter. I've seen a lot of shelters, but this one's really nice looking. This one does have an upstairs. I don't think I'm going to be going up to it. It is up there. I'm going to have a really nice view. I very rarely ever talk about my camp setup, only because when I get to camp, it is super late. But uh, we're staying in a shelter. So what I did here is... I brought my ground cloth for my tent, so I have that first. Uh, then I have my SOL blanket, which is like right here, that I just laid over top of it for added warmth. And then on top of that, I have my insulated REI flash uh, sleeping pad. Its R value is 5.2, so it should get me pretty down to the depths of the coldness. I do, I just bought this, it's a sleeping bag liner, so I'll be crawling into that, and then I have my hammock gear zero degree with me. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to stay in the shelter, and I put my head end down here, I'm unsure if I'm going to keep it down here, uh, but I typically lay on my stomach, so I thought if I have it down here, if I hear anything, I can just pick up my head and uh, see it but this is going to be my camp area for the night on uh, what I'm looking at for my setup I did make my meal so what I'm using is the jet boil I typically use a Stanley but I decided to go with a uh, jet boil today it is a little bit more weight so as far as backpacking it's not one that I recommend if you're one of those that are concerned about weight but for this type of trip, it did pretty good justice. Um, it boiled my water pretty quickly, which was nice. But uh, yeah, this is where we will be staying for the night. This is going to be our view. Uh, so it's going to be really nice to see the sun come up in the morning time. And again, it's my first time in a shelter. So that'll be interesting to see how I do versus being in a tent or my hammock.
But all right, I will check back in with you guys later. It is morning and finally awake. So last night I ended up taking all of my stuff and going upstairs. Um, it just seemed a lot better with my paranoia. Having the open way was a little bit too intense for me. Uh, but once I got up there, it was a little bit warmer and I passed out, which was really nice. So uh, no concerns with going upstairs. So that was really nice. Uh, nighttime, it got a little bit cold. Um, not that cold, but the wind started picking up again. So definitely glad that we stayed in the shelter. Um, I mean, with the tent, it probably wouldn't have been so bad. But once that wind picked up, it definitely would have felt it. Uh, other than that, the night was really well. I want to say that there was porcupines chewing on the shelter, though. Um, either crawling around, rubbing on the shelter. So you definitely were able to hear that. Uh, other than that, again, night was overall pretty well. I made it throughout the night, no fears, so that's a good accomplishment. But uh, we watched the sun come up. Now we're going to make something to eat here and then hopefully hit the trail and uh, head on out of here. But uh, all right, I'm going to turn it off and uh, start my morning. So I am packing up everything and we're going to be heading the trail probably relatively soon. So there was a couple of things that I probably didn't need on this trip. So um, my pack weight altogether is probably about 27, 28 pounds, um, which is typically usually a little bit higher than what it would normally be. So I brought my tent, um, which I wasn't too sure if we were going to stay in a shelter or not, but I probably should have been a little bit more um, prepared as far as what we were doing on the trail and I really didn't need to bring a tent I mean I should have brought like maybe a shelter of some sort like maybe like a tarp or something but other than that um, knowing that we were coming to a shelter I uh, didn't need to bring that so that would have been like five pounds I wouldn't have needed to bring also um, I kind of sucked up a little bit more weight so my stove kit I usually use the MSR stove and then a Stanley pot and that kit for me is relatively um, lesser in weight, where with this trip, I chose my jet boil um, set and stove that it came with it. And I'm not really good with that stove set yet. Um, I've been testing it relatively a lot and a lot more since I've got it. I've had it for a while. I've just haven't taken it out on any trail. So I've been testing it a little bit more and that system so far, I, I still don't like. Um, it's nothing of the actual system itself. So the Jetboil brand is great. It does definitely work really well. And it does uh, do a really good job at boiling your water um, really quick. But it's heavier in weight. So if you suck up the weight, you're definitely good with that option. But if you don't want to suck up the weight, then um, you're going to have to look for another option. So that's one thing that I don't like about the jet boil is the weight of it. It's very bulky. Not everything fits inside of its pot like the Stanley or other models that are out there. Food-wise, it did really good with my food choices. So there's no concern there. I had uh, potatoes last night for like an afternoon snack-ish, which helped warm me up. And then nighttime, I had rice with some tuna, and that overall really warmed up my tummy. And right after I was done with dinner, I walked around for a little bit, and then I crawled into my sleep system. So as my belly was nice and warm, I was able to go ahead and uh, get all warm and snuggy in my system. And like I said before, I ended up in the middle of the, I was probably like laying down for like a half hour to an hour, had to go to the bathroom. Privy is a little bit farther for me. I am still afraid of the dark. I did do the hundred feet away from the shelter to go to the bathroom, but I did not make it to the privy um, only because it was a little too far at nighttime by myself. So it kind of freaked me out. I did end up coming back. I tried to lay in my sleep system 
um, in the bottom of the shelter, but the porcupines and the noises of the trees and some mice were creeping me out. So I moved everything up to the upper part of the shelter. And then I went to sleep a little bit after 11 and I was out. I tossed and turned every now and then and uh, a breeze would come up underneath my quilt. But other than that, I was pretty warm. So overall, the night recap definitely was pretty good. So gear choices need to rethink some of the ones that I take and be more prepared for the trail. And other than that, um, I call this one a success. So we're going to pack up, hit the trail, show you the, a little bit of the rest of the trail. We're going to head out to 501 where the car is parked. And then we're going to probably walk up to that shelter and take a look at it, see what it looks like. And then after that, uh, go back to the other car and then go about our day for a lovely Sunday. Relax probably for the rest of the day because my feet aren't going to want to be walked on. <laughs> But all right, talk to you guys later. Bye. So we're about halfway on our day two trail out to 501. And we came across this intersection that had some rocks and an arrow pointing. So someone at this campsite built a fireplace, which was really nice. And there's supposed to be a really nice lookout here. So we are going to just take a look and see what it looks like. Adam's already out here taking a look for himself. There's all those rocks, rocks. My feet hurt. That's a nice lookout. I'm not going to get down much further because these rocks hurt my feet. <laughs> so we're almost coming to an end and uh, the views is just so pretty. Look at that. Nice clear skies. You could see. Man, stuff like this makes me worth it. Yeah. We're getting ready to hit the car. We are about over four miles for day two. Um, pretty easy. There was only one incline area, but because I was sore yesterday, it was a little rough. But uh, other than that, this, this part was a breeze. I mean, there's some rocks like to go over like boulders, but not like really rock climbing or anything of that nature. wait for the motorcycles to go by it's a nice day out so it's really warm today and the wind died down so it's really nice what we're gonna do is we're gonna still check out the shelter at the 501 but I'm gonna take the pack off and then I'm gonna drink a lot of water and just enjoy the rest of the day um, I haven't really hiked that much this year yet in like 2019 so this one's really hitting me but uh once i recover and get a good meal in me and uh some more water i should be good but this is a trail definitely recommend it as always if you like this video give it a thumbs up comment down below if you have any questions about this piece of the trail or other trail pieces that i've done and as always i'll see you on the next one all right bye So for the hiking,
when you come in. This is going to be just shelter. So you got bunk beds, um, got where you can hang your stuff from, chairs. You got the map and all sorts of information. So, yeah, this is really nice. I haven't seen a shelter like this before. Like, you even get a mirror. I'm not going to look to see what I look like, but yeah, you get a mirror. So, you could easily fit two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve people in here. We even need to use the floor you can. You have a basically share table. You get a really nice light source. So this is top notch of a shelter for sure.